Why this lawsuit? Because there's something wrong when you can shoot the President of the United States, but you can't shoot someone who was just recently an AG who is running for U.S. Senate. It doesn't fit as a matter of public policy or law. As you prepare to watch this video, don't forget that the GOP, by and through John McCain, has a history of ejecting black reporters from events without any reason. Just ask Stephen Price. Now, John McCain, of course, was with Kelly Ayotte at the VFW when they ejected me. Or actually, they didn't even let me in. Ladies and gentlemen, may it please the court. Uh, the basic issue in this case is that the New Hampshire GOP the Nashua PD, and the same U.S. Senator, Kelly Ayotte, who is under fire from the ACLU for promoting an increased police state uh, that threatens to undermine American civil rights, uh, they deem it appropriate to threaten reporters with arrest just because they don't like what we have to say. Now, even if my case does not win on the established persuasive law from another jurisdiction, it does win on public policy straight out, Your Honor. And the reason for that is, well, keep in mind that Defendant Ayotte and her staff publicly advertised these three events, and that on one of them, a specific RSVP was offered and accepted by the plaintiff. That's me. Now, this was for an event at the VFW of all places, a place to celebrate veterans who died protecting civil liberties. You know, um, this is where several AI supporters did not agree with her ban of me. Um, and the fact that she's a recently resigned eight-year AG uh, in New Hampshire, and that her campaign security wonk, Stephen Monnier, is a lifetime law enforcement officer only compounds the situation. These people were clearly cloaked with you know, state authority in doing what they were doing. Um, also, there's simply no evidence in the record that the plaintiff, that's me, disrupted any event or that I caused any event to come to an end, despite the temporary restraining order uh, hearing machinations of Magistrate Judge Lange B. McCafferty, who, by the way, worked at Kelly Ayotte's old law firm of McLean Graff alongside and under current New Age uh, uh, New Hampshire Bar Association president Jennifer Parent and founder of the firm Jack Middleton. Now none of them told me about this fact. And as a federal litigator myself, I know they should have told me about this fact. But anyway, this fact did eventually cause her recusal after substantial fact and law was set before the court by me. Yet plaintiff, that's me, <laughs> is still left to wonder why every single other judge recused themselves without motion. Now to return to the case. Writers as far away from uh, as Arizona have stated that journalism needs more Chris Kings. And uh, it's a fact that the defendants can cite to only a case in, in this instance involving a New Hampshire man who tried to interrupt a meeting and to actually take on the dais. He was going to get on stage on private property during a Democratic convention. That case is not on point. The case which is on point particularly given the fact that plaintiff, that's me, was an NAACP legal chair when defendant Ayotte issued failed and arguably bigoted legal actions against me, is NAACP versus Thompson, in which black reporters were permitted to attend and to report on a private Ku Klux Klan rally held at someone's home because substantial state licensing and permitting were required for the venue. Now, to make matters worse, she and her chief of staff, John Easton, lied while soliciting public funds to defend this lawsuit, stating that I have filed frivolous lawsuits against AOT. That's a false statement of fact and a legal term of art that uh, it's incorrect. And it, it's, that's part of the subject of the pending Third Amendment complaint that Judge Barbara Doro refused to allow to this point. And he recused himself. But anyway, he's the same judge who erroneously stated that the motion to recuse Judge McCafferty was entirely without merit. Now the court is well aware that Case Western Reserve University does not graduate any dummies, as his honor graduated from that law school exactly 10 years prior to plaintiff, that's me, uh, who also has a background as a law enforcement attorney. Now lastly, the New Hampshire Police Department, or rather, excuse me, the National Police Department, uh, who along with Senator Ayotte continues to refuse to investigate the forgery of my name to a mortgage, okay? Uh, this has been going on for eight years now. Uh, the National Police Department has seemed to jump, uh, seen fit to jump into this fray by badgering plaintiff as uh, he, that's me, <laughs> stood on a public sidewalk following their directions 
as other Caucasian people stood closer to a backing car than I did. And they did so without any comment or hassle whatsoever. And then lastly, look at the way this dark-skinned uh, brother right here, this officer, look at the look on his face as he's studying his cohorts. He's not looking at me with that face. He's looking at them. And that's an outright view of contempt. Now, in sum, may a jury find that these actions trammel the free press and First Amendment interest? Yes, uh, particularly because uh, in, the, in the case of the National Police Department, they ran me out of the entire Crown Plaza, even after I left the meeting room. And there's, you know, that's a place of public accommodations. There's restaurants there. There's a bar there. They ran me right out of there under threat of arrest, as I have on video, Your Honor. Uh, so obviously a jury could find that these actions trammel uh, free press and First Amendment interests. Uh, may a jury find that these actions are in substantial part motivated by racial antipathy, given the backdrop of a bogus prosecution led by then A.G. Ayotte and her continued refusal to address uh, my legitimate concerns uh, that she's thrice refused to investigate now as a U.S. Senator regarding the mortgage crisis and the forgery of my name to a mortgage. Of course it may. You know, why else would somebody ignore these issues, you know, given the backdrop of the parties? Uh, now, let, uh, Magistrate McCaffrey said, well, the parties had an acrimonious past, but that, you know, that whited out the whole issue. It glossed over the whole issue. No, this acrimonious past, Your Honor, was steeped in race and First Amendment issues, as my pleadings clearly indicate. And that is why this case must proceed into discovery and on toward trial. Thank you for your time. And I'm prepared to answer any questions the court may have. KingCast.net, always fighting for the First Amendment, civil rights, open government.